Morning everybody. What a lovely morning it is. Hopefully the rain will uh, stay away for a while. But, um, yeah, something different this morning. We're going to be having a look at electric motorcycles. There are um, some new guys that have moved in. JNM Electro Bikes. They've moved into a unit. Had a chat with Matt the other day and he's quite happy to uh, let me have a look, do a bit of vlogging. So uh, we'll see what these things are all about. They, uh, they do a. I think they got various bikes there. Um, predominantly they're zero. They deal in zeros, which are obviously the American. They're made in California. And they're right up there, I think, at the top of the tree, the zeros with Harley Davidson and Anajika. But yeah, we'll have a we'll have a little look. Put our preconceptions away and see what we actually think about them. Don't think there's anybody there. Right, well, here we are at um, JNM Electro Bikes. And there's our safety just over there. I think I would annoy them for two, two days a week. But yeah, let's go and have a look and see what, uh, what this is all about. JNM Electro Bikes. There we go. Hello, anybody here? Ah, here's Matt. Here's Matt. He's uh, he's the man in the know about these things, these bikes. And you can see they've got some a fair bit of stock in. Bit of everything, really. Commuter yeah. market, delivery market, um, all the way up to your event adventure bikes and sports bikes. Yeah. Um, some more off-road, supermoto kind of style stuff as well. Yeah. So, yeah. and even uh, little scooter there. Kind of Vespa Lambretta style. <laughs> That so, is, isn't it? Ar Artisan. Now that is a 50s Vespa, yeah. isn't it? Really? Much. Yeah. It's almost a panel to panel ratio rebuild. Yeah. yeah. And that's got, well, obviously it'll have an electric engine in it, won't it? So, that's it exactly, yeah. 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 1499. I like that. Very popular. Oh, do, yeah, I bet. They come I in bet. and go out straight away. I bet they're whizzing, <laughs> those are those whizzing around London, no doubt. Yes, yeah. So we've got, uh, these are obviously um, made in China. Would, it, would that be right? I yeah, Horwin is um, a Chinese brand. Um, good thing about Horwin is that they have their own manufacturing facility, R&D facility, yeah. everything's done in-house. Um, whereas, you know, a lot of the stuff from China is mm. this kind of like pattern bikes, as we call them, yeah, where yeah, any copies. factory kind of just yeah, picks up yeah. the designs and they make it, well, and it looks the same, but yeah. you've got no, no control over the quality. Mm. Or the it was a lottery. Right? A few, few years back, it was a lottery, but, mm. I mean, now with, with the, you know, the ice engines, the motorcycles, they they're top, well, getting the top of the game now, so yeah. uh, they do, you know. Yeah, they are, yeah, they're kind of doing what Japan did back in yeah. the 80s. This just... is what we were saying the other yeah. day, I mean, we took the CF Moto, yeah. it was the KTM engine, and I mean, yeah. the Chinese, you can't pin anything down nowadays, the Chinese are making engines for Yamaha, mm. KTM, so, you know, yeah. just to label it old Chinese, you yeah. know, it's not going to be any good. No, it's, it's not it, the same, it's... A, lot, a lot of those factories are... They're kind of like European run or, or built to European yeah, standards. Yeah, absolutely. So, so what we would see as good quality yeah. in Europe is actually now yeah. what they're developing in China. Well, I had one one beyond. guy write in on my channel, and he, he said, "Oh, Chinese, you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't use Chinese products." Blah blah. And I thought, well, mate, mm. if that's your attitude, you'll be sat on an orange box in exactly. the middle of your house with nothing to arrange it <laughs> because exactly. you know everything yeah. components yeah. come from China. Even so. a lot of the electronics and the stuff that yeah. kind of runs the brains of the bike. That's right. Yeah. All manufactured there now. So. And then uh, Super Soco, which is now yeah, rebranded no. as Vimoto. Right. Um, but again, similar scenario to the Horwin stuff. It's, yeah. it's Chinese R and D manufacturing. Yeah. I think all done in, in their own facilities. Yeah, I've heard of Super Sock ever been about yeah. for a while, haven't they? Yeah, and, and this is by far our, our best selling bike yeah, because, is it? because of the the entry point, the price point, um, the mm. fact you've got removable batteries, so you can ah, whack right. it out so, and charge literally anywhere. So the battery just pulls out. You can just, just comes take out it in your house. Out the lid. Yeah. So this is um, just a, a, a little um, hinged. Top section, you've got yeah. a small amount of storage, 
and then the battery sits kind of in here. So you just yeah. open that, take the, the, the cap off the storage and the battery yeah. just lifts straight out. So if you live in a flat or, you know, you can just park your bike under a cover outside, exactly, pull yeah. the battery yeah. out. I mean, from a, from a commuter perspective, it's, it's brilliant because you can, you can just take the battery out and charge it in the office at yeah. work if, brilliant. if your boss allows yeah. you to. What range would you have on that then, Matt? So that one, generally speaking, will do somewhere between 45 and 55 miles. So I um, do for commuter and so... Yeah, I mean, if you're in central London and, and you know, really restricted on speed, then you could probably get 60 miles out of it. Yeah. Um, we did a range test on it ourselves and got um, just over 55. And that was kind of in and around the road yeah. around Swindon. See, that's a reasonable price as well, you know, it's... Yeah. Um, I mean, so these, obviously, they're used in the next demo. Um, brand new, they're only just over 3,000 anyway. So. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, Three it's, grand, yeah. It's, it's a really affordable bike. Yeah, right. um, really interesting. Yeah. And then we come to this now. This is what I've been waiting to see. This is, this is beautiful. <laughs> this is the, uh, the DSRX. Yeah. And it's and this, uh, one, this one specifically, the Black Forest edition. Black Forest, and it does look nice. It does yeah. look nice. And that's um, classed as a, an adventure tourer, isn't it? I do believe. Yes, yeah. Um, you know, there's there's a, a certain scenario where these bikes work best. Um, mm. These aren't motorway munches by any means. They're not no. cross-continental no. um, kind of riding bikes. But these are for going down your you know, country B road and a bit of off that's light right. off-roading, a bit of green yeah. laning. Because um, you've got your regen on these, haven't you? So that's where, you know, if you're going... So sort of country lanes and country roads, your regen is going to be working, exactly. um, yeah. which is going to give you a bit of extra range. The more you're on and off the throttle, the more your regen yeah. is going to give you something back. But that is a nice looking bike, man. That, I do like that. Yeah. Plus you've got your luggage. Yeah, so the Black Forest Edition comes as standard with your, your big screen, you've got your, your frame guards, your hand guards. Well, you've got your adjusted frame. Slightly nicer um, seat. Plastic Alcantara. Oh, yes, yeah, like a. It's a more, much more um, hard wearing waterproof Alcantara. Yeah. Um, comes with all of your nice. luggage boxes and everything. Um, comes with your centre stand, slightly SW, more aggressive foot pegs. SW Motor. Yeah. So they're uh, good quality boxes. Yeah. And it, you know, you've got all of this storage, but you've also got another 24 litres of storage. That's right, yeah. <laughs> just built into the front. So these side panels open up on the tank, don't yeah, they? Yeah, so this, this is what we, you'd normally say, you know, put a thing like a, a spare belt, first aid kit, right. small toolbox. Okay. Yeah, that sort of stuff goes in these side pods. And those just... It's just a little T20. Right, um, I'm with you. Talks, yeah. yeah. So we can get those on a, on a little key ring, so you keep it on yeah. your key and then you, so you just have undo to that. Well. Undo the screws on it. But and then that this, just flips this up. So you've got the, the key there, that flips up, and you've got a big amount of storage, a couple of USB ports in there. Wow. So you can charge your phone up. That is a stunning looking motorcycle. Yeah. Oh, and the uh, belt drive, and I do believe that's a Gates belt on there. It is, yeah. Um, and now, what were you saying? There's a recess on the pulley, so if you get any bits of grit in that, it's not going to shred the belt. So not that it will, because the belt technology just nowadays is... Just allows you know, small stones yeah, and bits, yeah, if, if, it yeah. go, if it does get in there, it can, it can release yeah. itself. Well, I've, read, I've had belts on the Harleys for years, and uh, I've never had an issue with them, but... Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it's interesting. A lot of bikes are going over to belt now, aren't they? Yeah, so, it's, it's a, a more affordable, less maintenance. That's right. Um, easier to use, easier to live with. Kind well, of. I should think that belt drive system linked with the electric motor, you're not going to get... It's just yeah. really as smooth as butter, isn't it? Exactly. I would have thought. The yeah. you know, and that really is kind of... Uh, aside from the ridiculous acceleration, the, the smoothness yeah. and the comfort is kind of the party piece of the, yeah. the electric, because they are... And especially for this, this scenario of a bike, where you are going to be sat on it for, for longer hours, you're going to be in more uncomfortable mm. um, scenery, you know, rubbing roads and that sort of thing. So to have that buttery smooth drivetrain, yeah. um, just you know, twist of the throttle, it's direct drive off the motor, there's, there's no gearing, there's no, there's no oil or coolant or anything like that to change. So. Well, Matt, these things are new to me. So I've, I've always been intrigued with them ever since they, they first came out, these electric bikes. So. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm going to have a clear mind about it all and, um, and, and take one out and see what I think. Well, we've also got um, a track bike sat in the corner. So, um, yeah, I think Matt's um, playing around with um, a track bike. He's going to race one. So. Exactly. Yeah, well, you've got to have your fun as well, haven't you? So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we should be looking at about 150 mile an hour top speed. Um, still going to be around the sort of three, three and a half second mark to the 60. 
Yeah, this is the internals of one of these things. This is what they look like with all the bodywork taken off. Yeah. So it's slightly modified in there. Normally you've got the, the charging system on you, board. Right, okay. But obviously because being a track bike, we want to try and reduce the amount of weight yeah. we can. So we've, we've taken all of the charging system off it. So we've got a separate box for that. So we're about 40 kilo lighter than standard at the moment. Right. Um, and then the rear rear seat frame, I think, is going to be modified so we can... Uh, oh, there's the motor. The there. They're really simple, really, aren't they? You know, the actual concept of them. It I is. Mean, uh, there's, yeah. When you think of an ice engine with all the parts, working parts, yeah, exactly. whizzing up and down. How, how many moving um, parts there are versus... I mean, what would the, the servicing entail on one of these? Because there's... I would have thought, apart from obviously the... Um, but your, your general wear items, yeah. like brakes, belt. Exactly. Um, so, so we check over all of that. Um, and then it's a, basically a health check. So we, we plug the computer in and yeah. do the, <laughs> the yeah. modern day electronic yeah. version of a service. So there's not a lot going on with the motor, is there? Because it's just no. spinning a cu couple exactly. of bearings it's, in there? It's, uh, well, it's a permanent magnet motor. Um, yeah. So it's brushless. There's no, yeah. no mating part. So, so there's no oil or anything. So just in there. be a couple of bearings chucked in there, or it's, whatever. Yeah, or just just some, some bearings on the output shaft, and that's, that's basically it. It's, it's super easy to maintain. And then we do a battery health check on the bikes, just to Job see, done. see where the health is of the, the individual mm -hmm. cells, and that's it. Pretty much. Do any firmware updates? And so what, what would the servicing costs be? Would... So it's 180 pounds for, right. for a zero. For right. a okay. Well, that's probably in line with anything else really, isn't it? Just, uh... Yeah, but then you've got to think, if, if you do have any internals that need replacing on an internal combustion engine, then your well, servicing oh, yeah. costs start to oh, go yeah. through the roof, whereas you, you don't yeah. ever have that scenario no. with these. Shouldn't do. Consistent, yeah, do. consistent servicing costs. Brilliant. Okay, right, well, we'll, um, we'll get out on this. Which one am I taking out, Matt? It's the SRF. SRF. I did. I did, did think I was going to take this one out, but uh, it's not available today. And I did my homework on this one, but very similar bikes, um, same frame, same engine. Exactly, same platform. Engine, motor. Same. <laughs> engine. Oh, actually, the motor is the only one. The, the one thing that's different. Oh right. So the, the trellis frame's the same. The 17.3 kilowatt hour battery right. pack is the same. Um, it's got the same Bosch management system, apart from mm. the, the off-road mode it doesn't have on this. Mm. And the motor is a, uh, a 75 10, so it's a 10 inch wide motor rather than a 7 inch wide motor. Oh right, so that's what that 10 stands, 75 yeah. 10. Yeah. Right, okay. Right then, well, we'll pull this outside and, um, and I'll try not to fall off of it. <laughs> I was only joking. <laughs> right then, okay. Oh crikey, it's low, isn't it? Right, so here we go then. Ignition on. And then that's your, that's your um, live, isn't it? Your live button. So we're in street mode. Is that up? Street mode, 57 miles of range. So eco, you reckon, to start off? Okay, there you go, I'm in it. Um, 80% down. Right. Um, so it's just a nice introduction to it. Right. And then, um, and then have a play. Right, well thanks Matt. And I'll try not to fall off of it. <laughs> right. So here I go then. Ooh. That's bizarre, that is. Hey! There's Alex. He's our next door neighbour. Right, I'm in economy mode now, so I ain't going to have too much. Uh... Right, I'm looking to change gear now. This is. Uh... This is all right. I'm not disliking it. It's strange, but see, no clutch, no gears. Well, if that's in eco mode, that's feisty enough for me. It's got plenty of pull. Yeah, the uh, it's, it's low. Seat's quite hard. And uh, the distance for me, I'm six, six foot, the um, footrests are quite high. Um, your 
cantered forward a fair bit. Brakes are lovely. And then you just throttle off. And there you go. Stop. That is bizarre. But I'm not disliking it at all. Like I say, all your preconceptions of what these bikes are going to be like. And you just have to forget all that and actually get your ass on one and ride one. But uh, So we've got uh, the temperature. Our range is 59 miles and then that obviously gives you the motor temperature. So the more current you're drawing from it, you're giving it the beans, I take it, it's going to get hot. So, so yeah, time. And I'm in um, eco mode, so I'll, uh, I'll get up the road a bit. I didn't want to put it straight into sport because um, there we go nice and gently you have to open the throttle on eco you, you have to open the throttle quite a way to get it to move but that's if you're not used to the bike that's not a bad thing and we've got this you see now as soon as I th shut the throttle it's going to rip you've got this regen on this so it's pumping it's using the inertia to put power back into the battery the inertia of the bike to put power back into the battery so yeah you throttle off and I'd say it's a light very similar to um, yeah you power off shut the throttle and it's very similar to having um, a v-twin with your braking um, with the engine braking which would be the regen and then you go into different modes I think like sport and whatever and you don't get so much regen but um, ah, this is fine, and this is like I say, eco mode. This is fine for bimbling round town. It's quite quite well planted. It, it, it's stable. It's not. It won't. You can't make it twitch. So it feels nice and uh, steady. I don't know how long it is actually, it f feels like it's got quite a long wheelbase. Of course you've got a lot of weight uh, in the battery pack, so you've got a lot of weight low down. So you don't really notice it, but when you, if you try and flick the bike, you notice the weight then a little bit, if that makes sense to you. <laughs> so there you go, just stopped. That's weird because you think, oh God, is me in your subconscious thinking the engine's stored but uh, so here we go let's just give it some beans and probably 40 oh that, that that's um, <laughs> that's quick but that's an eco so take it back down to 35 we don't want to speed do we right going for the clutch see I was going for the clutch then it's just habit isn't it nice and steady we get it out on the uh, oh, it's a good maneuver we get it out on the 419 now and give it some beans Sixty mile an hour. I tell you what, guys, there's nothing wrong with these. Right, we're, what I'm going to do? We're going to pull over, and I'm going to stick this in a slightly different mode. I think we're going to go into canyon mode which apparently you got full regen and full power on that so we'll do that because I'm kind of got my head around how the bike's gonna handle now so we can uh, dial the we can dial the power lip power in
It's a little lay-by just round here. That cyclist don't know I'm behind him. <laughs> Can't hear me. Right, okay. Watch the diesel slick. There we go. So now, what I'm going to do, so we, we're down to, there's 2%. We're at, we're on fifty on the um, on the battery uh, on this thing. Um, I'm sure we went up a bit, and now we're down because I just came down that bypass for a couple of miles. We're down to two percent. Like I say, um, I'm playing with half a tank full of fuel technically, or half a charge, because this bike went out yesterday. Uh, it went to Bristol and back apparently. So anyway, let's press this. I'll keep your finger on the mode button. Right, it's flashing. Rain, we don't want rain, nobody likes rain. Canyon, right. Throttle shut, press it again. I'm in canyon now. So this is the all singing and dancing one, I think. So we'll um we'll have a look. Well, there's a bit more poke to it. Right, here we go then. 50 mile an hour. Oh, that's good, I like that. I'm liking that, that horse ass. Why is he actually uh, sitting out in the middle of the road? Perhaps he doesn't want me to overtake him. Here we go. Ooh. There's a lot of talk, a lot of talk going down. But, uh, yeah. It's alright. Yeah. Well, I think if they could sort the range out on these, once battery technology comes along a bit, I'd have one. I wouldn't be disappointed if I had to ride one of these, put it that way. Um, like I say, infrastructure in this country is, is your main issue. Um, I know old Boris and his mates, when they signed up you know, for all this electrification, I can imagine it was like a bunch of school kids in the classroom all jumping up with their hands up in the air saying, me, 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 we'll do it. We'll sign up. Well, to be quite honest, they just didn't have a clue, did they? They, uh, they didn't really think it out. Um, I think the country's run by half-wits anyway. I really do believe that. Yeah, the bike rides, all r rides OK. Uh, suspension's... Firmish on the firm side, but you're getting plenty of feel come through from the road. See, this is what we got over here. This is what we got 40 mile an hour. Look at this road, just look at it. It is 40 mile an hour, but then you've got this junction here, so it's probably got something to do with it. I expect they've had a few accidents down here. It's uh, yeah, 40. Look, might as well buy a moped, isn't it? Do you think there's a conspiracy to have us all off the road? Just gradually get everybody off the road and get them on buses. Dear. Oh, hang on, we can go up to 50 now. Right, let's see how quick it goes up to 50. Really. Oh, that was uh, probably a second, two seconds. I think those... Um, Those adventure bikes, the one that I was supposed to be taking out, um, I think they'll accelerate from, I think it's 40 to 80 mile an hour in three seconds. I may stand corrected, but I'm pretty sure that's the stats. And they're telling you they've got a, a, a zero, they're telling you there's a range of up to 150 miles. Well, I think me riding one of these bikes, um, if it was me, you're realistically looking at a 100 mile range um, 
if you get them on the motorway, you can deplete the battery within 70 miles. Uh, and that's riding at uh, the speed limit. Um, they don't really like sustained high speed stuff, these, these uh, electric bikes. Uh, you've got to be using the reject on windy roads. Um, but yeah, you could deplete the battery in about 70 miles. Um, so if you're touring, and really the, uh, the Adventure Tourer, that's what it's all about. It kind of defeats the object, doesn't it? Because you're going to be stopping um, to charge it up, probably every 100 miles. And that would take you uh, two hours, two and a half hours, uh, on one of the motorway chargers. Or if you have the fast charger fitted, you can have a fast charge, a supercharge. Supercharge, yeah, fast charge. No, supercharge option, which is two and a half thousand or two thousand three hundred pounds, I do believe. And that would charge the bike in an hour, so that you cut your stop times down to an hour. So if you're doing a journey of 300 miles, you've got to factor in um, three hours sitting on your ass drinking tea, um, or sitting on your ass in the rain depending where you're charging. So yeah, um, that's the only minus point I think is the battery life on these. Um, but it's all wizardry really, you know, you could probably go out, like Matt was saying, you could probably go out on a, a windy route and with your regen have a nice day out. And I think that's where these are really, uh, really make sense. It's almost like a commuter bike and a, and a, and a day out bike, you know. Uh, which begs the question, do you buy a smaller, like a supermoto version, um, rather than a great big touring bike that'll only do 100 mile? Hmm. I have done a little bit of homework and watched other reviews um, from reputable vloggers, Motorcycle News being one, and uh, it's a triumph. Um, and they're all saying the same thing really, the range is the problem of these bikes. But, um, but yeah, you go for a smaller one. They've got that little. Um, they've got like a little supermoto in there. I'd love to take that out. Because when I go out on the Hemi, you know, go for a day out. You uh, do a bit of trail riding, perhaps. I know you wouldn't on a supermoto, but if you put some decent, I don't know if they do a uh, a trail bike, but uh, that would be ideal up the ridgeway. You know, you're not making any noise. And it's you know, nice and green and good to the planet. And you, so you're up on the trails and then you come down and you whiz around a bit, go and have a cup of coffee and you probably do a, a hundred mile, 80, 80 to hundred mile. Those, those little ones come into their own. I think they're good for about 80 mile actually. So um, those make sense. But then they're not the cheapest. They're not the cheapest. So uh, they're not the cheap, cheapest of options, these, uh, these electric bikes, so uh, you've got to factor that in as well. But I think I'd have my ice engine for all the, the nitty gritty going places. Um, like my Suzuki DE or Harleys or whatever for actually travelling distance. And uh, I'd have a smaller EV bike for um, whizzing round, going to work on. Going up, like I say, up on the Ridgeway. Going out with the breakfast crew on a Sunday. Ideal. But like I say, you got to factor in the price. These things ain't cheap. And I think the little, um, the smaller ones are about 12, 13,000. And I think these ones you can get up. I mean, that um, adventure bike, I do, I do believe, is, is over 20,000 pound if not more. Hurry up, cyclist. See, he doesn't know I'm here. He really doesn't know I'm here. That's the thing with these. 
we'll try and find somewhere to pull up and we'll uh, we'll go over the bike. I've taken some notes. So um We'll have a chat about what's actually on this thing. Well, we're coming into Coles Hill now. Now, this is a beautiful little, owned by the National Trust, beautiful little uh, village. So George Martin lived here. He uh, produced a lot of the Beatles records, didn't he, and Scylla. Scylla's stuff back in the 60s. Well, a real famous guy, Sir George Martin. And also Jason Donovan lived here. for a while well right here we are we're in a nice little quiet spot just uh, one of the back roads in Coles Hill, a lovely little village. Uh, there's an old, old stables and the farm there, but uh, anyway. So here we go, the zero. There she is. I've just actually, uh, when I got off it, I actually pushed it a little bit up the hill and you can feel the weight. But apparently there is um, an option that you've got a reverse and slow creep forward um, mode on it so you don't have to push it, which is a good idea. But anyway, what have we got? We've got Showa suspension, Showa front forks, with J. Joanne brakes. I think we've got, um, what's the, uh, yeah, we've got 320 mill rotors on there. Uh, the back you've got, what would the back be? I reckon that's um, 265 rotor with a single piston caliper. Uh, what tyres are we running? We've got a 180 uh, 55 ZR17 Pirelli. Uh, well, they're all right, but uh, wouldn't have been my choice. But. Uh, there's your Z47510, 10 stands for um, 10 inch in electric land. So um, 10 inch windings, I guess, I don't know. Uh, trellis frame, there's your battery pack, 17.3 kilowatt hours. And it's a lithium ion battery. You've got a cubby hole here. Um, it says pull. Oh, there's your chuck. <laughs> There's your charging socket there. Now the charging, you've got two levels of charging. You've got your three pin plug socket and lead, which you plug into your house and that charges at three kilowatts. And then you've got your level two, which is what most stuff is equipped with, um, which is that. You can plug them into the motorway chargers and wherever, you know, charging points when you're out and about or if you have them fit to your house. Um, and that's a level two and that's six kilowatt charge uh, and it charges um, on level two using that at six kilowatts it charges in uh, you get full charge in two and a half hours so you're going to be sat having a cup of coffee for two and a half hours i guess um, there is a sweet pot spot with these electric vehicles though isn't it between 20 and 80 percent charge i think if you charge them past 80 percent you can degrade the battery life, I think, if you carry on doing it. You can do it, but if you do it a lot, you can degrade the battery life, I think. So uh, there's that to consider. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, and you can also, now does this open? Hang on, what's, what have we got? Oh, I don't know, I don't know, you open that. I think this opens somehow. Mm. Anyway, under here, there's a cubby hole. But you can have what they call um, a supercharger put in there, a fast charger, um, and that will cost you uh, two and a half thousand pounds to have your fast charger put in there, and then you you can charge at 12.6 kilowatts 
they'd all get a full charge in an hour. So that brings your um, your coffee stops down to an hour while you're charging. Like I say, if I was riding this thing, um, if I was riding this thing, realistically, my, my range would, I reckon, be about 100 mile. But then you've got um, like regen. Um, you can play around with that. So you've got to factor in all your regen and going down hills and stuff. So it's an art form, isn't it? You have to know the bike. Um, and um, yeah, you, you, it's an art form. You have to know the bike and get to, get to know um, you know the, your charge rates and that. It's very quick the battery discharges. So uh, and it's a Gates belt drive. You got a Gates belt drive on there. Harley started all that off, didn't they? But there's a lot of companies now using belt drives. And that's it. That's your engine load. You've just got a couple of bearings fired in there and there. Uh, there's your little miniature little driver uh, pulley. Looks like it's come out of a washing machine, doesn't it? In fact, that does look like it's come out of a washing machine. Obviously, it's not, but uh, I get trouble for this, don't I? Right, what else have we got? Um, yeah, these are running about 100 horsepower, I think. Um, 169 foot pound of torque with these with these engines or motors. Um, and the weight of the bike is um, is uh, 247 kilos. And I do believe it's got a top speed of around 112 miles an hour. That little round motor in there puts out more torque than a, uh, a rocket, a 2.5 rocket three. <laughs> it's nuts, isn't it? Legs are cramping up now because I'm old. Oh. There's good old Ash safety there. I wonder if Harry Enfield's in there. Is he in there? Yeah, there's Harry Enfield. Yeah, so I'm trying to put it together. I've been at it all day, but yeah. I keep doing stuff for Rob upstairs, mate. What's the time? Uh, I'll come and have a quick look in a minute. Right. Just here, Matt. That's fine, yeah. Well, how you get on? Pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did. I'd, I'd have one. I'd, I'd yeah. quite have. I. Everybody's got their, uh, you know, they they think, oh, oh, electric bikes, blah blah blah. But um, no, I, I really enjoyed it. It's. Uh, it is one of those things that you, you just can't judge until you ride it. No. It's, it's, exactly. You just don't understand how they feel, how they work, no. how they ride. No. You've just got to get on it. This is why I don't like it when people come in and straight away tell tell me their opinion. Yeah. And exactly. Like, you're not yeah. Good, you? you can't. Well, you can't, I've always be open-minded until the point where you've experienced. That's the way I am, and yeah. I, I was pleasantly surprised good. about I'm it. I'm glad. The only thing you tend to find yourself looking at is that good old little battery uh, you meter. Do. You yeah, know, so. yeah. But you you get used to that so quickly. Yeah. When, once you know. How many miles you can do on a charge? And, yeah, and you know I've, I've ridden them down to zero percent, knowing that I've still got Plus, ten miles in the tank. With the regen, you get to know the bike, don't exactly. you? With the regen, yeah. so you, you'll then you can't just go out on it for a couple of hours and just say, oh, because you you know I'm, I'm thinking, well, how far will it go? But um, I'm down to I think about sixteen percent. Yeah, but I do like the canyon mode. Yeah, it's that's good. The, isn't it? That's the one, and it's <laughs> instant. I wouldn't say it's. I mean, some of the people say that the torque is absolutely amazing on them. I wouldn't say that to what I've been used to, like the KTM's, mm. but mm. it's there and it low down, it's instant. Exactly. It's instantaneous, yeah. which you wouldn't get with a piston yeah. engine. Bike. Yeah, but, yeah it's, um, it's, it's, it's not so much that, like you say, it's that completely overwhelming torque, that yeah. peak torque, but it's yeah. the fact that you get its peak torque wherever well, you for, are. You know, it's, it's always there. 20 mile an hour, yeah. up to... 50 mile an hour yeah, or 60 mile an hour, just there, you're there, aren't <laughs> yeah. you? Blink of an eye. Yeah. Which you wouldn't really get unless you're on a, a really high powered. Um, yeah, and at the right specific rev 
exactly. to get that. Yeah. Exactly. You've this, got it there. The preparation time to go fast yeah. is a lot less on this. It's just linear power, isn't yeah, it? For this. Exactly. But uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with it actually. Yeah, good. I'm yeah. glad you enjoyed it. Well, I did enjoy it. And the DSRX is back up, but you can right. swing by and, and take yeah. that one out as well. Well, I'll tell you what I wouldn't mind doing at a later date is taking the smaller one out because yeah. I, if, if, uh, if I can. Of course you can, yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I enjoyed that. Yes. Anyway, I'd just like to thank you for letting me out on it. Yeah, and uh, like I cool. say, if nice anybody wants. Get the other two and yeah. FXC out for a spin. I'd strongly recommend this place. So if you're uh, if you're local and you want to delve into electric uh, motorcycles, come and have a look. Matt will um, talk you through them. But yeah, thank you.